It's a bittersweet day here. I've got my McLaren 540C, this beautiful car that I've had for the last, uh, I guess, three or yeah, three years. And uh, it's getting traded. Trading it for some Fords. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, I really like the new Bronco and I figured I'd get a new F-150 while I was at it because I do have an existing F-150. It's a couple years old and I want the 2021. So yeah, trading a McLaren. There it is for a Bronco and a pickup truck. Hey guys, Sean here, and this is my first attempt at a YouTube auto review, so to speak. I've been a car lover all my life. This is actually my 50th vehicle. I'm not a car flipper, but I just, especially when I was young, used to go through a lot of cars. Now, before I start this video and get into the guts of this Ford Bronco review, I'd like to give a thanks to Ed Learn Ford of St. Catharines, Ontario. I have now purchased four Ford vehicles from Ed Learn, and I found them to be an incredibly stand-up dealer that finds customer loyalty uh, above all else. In fact, we had a little bit of a, an issue uh, with one of our vehicles that caused me not to buy from Ed Learn Ford, and as an apology, they gave me a great deal when I traded my McLaren for both of these. So if you are in Southern Ontario looking for a Ford dealer that you can trust and rely on, definitely consider Ed Learn Ford. Now, as I said, I traded in my McLaren for a Ford Bronco and this Ford F-150. I've been a Ford fan for a long time and I've always had an F-150 or a Ford SUV, but this was my first uh, Bronco as this is a brand new vehicle. Now I'm gonna say right up front that I'm probably not the best person to be doing this review. What do I mean by that? I don't want to call myself a snowflake. I don't want to say I'm a princess. That would be wrong. Um, but my idea of camping is going to my cottage, turning on the air conditioning, and maybe binge watching squid games on Netflix. I don't even cut my own grass. That's what the landscapers are here doing. However, with all that said, I do want to give this thing a half decent review. If you are a Bronco buyer and like me, saw the thing uh, last year in 20, late 2020 and had to have one, then I don't want to disappoint you. It is a very, very cool truck. Obviously it looks great. If you were a fan of Tonka trucks or monster trucks as a kid, this is literally as close as you can probably get to a factory monster truck. It has giant 35 inch tires because of the Sasquatch package, extremely wide uh, side fenders, and of course, just a generally badass look. So I have no problems and no complaints with the exterior look of the Bronco. In fact, that's why I bought it. But as a person who is using this as a secondary or tertiary vehicle, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to me um, to own, which is why it's actually going back to my Ford dealer. I know, I know, there's a lot of you that are killing to get a Bronco and can't get one for 20, until 2022 or 2023. I'm sorry, but I did place this um, on reserve the second day that reservations were open and ordered it the day that actual orders could be placed. So that's why it's here. Now the first thing you'll notice if you're familiar with uh, Ford Broncos at all, that this is the cactus gray color. I really do like this color. I wasn't sure about it when I did it via the online configurator. I certainly had no color sample to go off of, but I'm very happy with this color. Now I'm a little bit biased because recently, uh, in the past I've been only buying white vehicles. I just love the color white, but this was my kind of first attempt at like a, a more matte gray, which is a lead foot uh, gray as Ford calls it on my F-150 and I wanted something similar. This is more of a pastel gray or a matte gray green and I'm really happy with it. So if I was keeping the vehicle I would certainly be more than happy that I chose this color. Uh, this particular package is the Badlands package. It is obviously a four-door 4x4 and with the Badlands package you get the upgraded grill which is like a uh, almost like a like a carbon look grill and then you get the upgraded headlights instead of the base headlights and of course you get the things like the full metal bumper um, which I think not only are more practical but just look better than the plastic bumper that comes in the base model. Um, going around this truck does have a Sasquatch package as I had said so it does have the water fender flares the much much bigger tires which are really cool in person. Uh, I've never been like a big jeep off-road guy this is definitely more of a aesthetics thing for me uh, when I purchased this vehicle, but I'm certainly happy uh, I got the Sasquatch package. In fact, if you bought a Bronco, a base Bronco, and are going to leave it as a base Bronco, I'm not sure why you bought a Bronco. I really feel that these things need to have big tires and a raised suspension. 
So if you're buying a base model, I'm assuming you're probably going to take it to the shop uh, within a week or two of owning it and make it look more like this. Now, let's talk about the things that I don't like about this vehicle. First thing I want to mention here is these doors. They, um, because of the frameless design, probably because they are detachable doors, and probably because weight was a factor making them detachable doors, they are very tinny. Uh, opening and closing them, you can see the just window uh, sh you know, shake and shimmy a lot. Um, and I've had vehicles, many, many vehicles, uh, exotic cars uh, and things like that with frameless doors and they've never really had that much of a wobble to them as this Bronco does. Not really a big deal, it's not going to prevent me from buying a vehicle if I was looking at something like this, but it's just something I noticed. Now, another thing that I noticed and thought was a little bit weird was actually something I didn't notice and that is the lack of power seats. This is a $75,000 truck. I'm in Canada, so it's $75,000 Canadian MSRP. It has the Lux package, meaning luxury package. Why in a luxury package would you have manual seats? I would expect that in um, even a high-end uh, sports car, my McLaren didn't have power seats, but that was more of a function of weight rather than a function of, uh, I don't know what. Um, I talked to the Ford uh, representative and their answer for the lack of power seats was to do with electronics below water level. So if you were taking this thing and going through, I'm assuming three feet of water, and you had that much water in your vehicle, electronics under the seat would be affected if it was a power seat. That to me just sounds strange because if you're taking this thing through the water, um, I'm hoping to God that you don't have a foot of water inside the vehicle. And certainly it's a very, very expensive vehicle to take essentially and bury halfway in the water. Even the Land Rovers that I've had, despite being sort of designed for that, are never going to really see that kind of action. Coming around the back of the truck or sport utility vehicle, if you prefer it called, uh, is another thing that I'm gonna say from a design perspective, maybe I don't have any uh, positive input on how it could have been made better but it certainly is easy to mistake for a Jeep Wrangler. In fact, my son, who's five, uh, went out the other day, saw a Jeep Wrangler uh, from his car seat uh, while my wife was driving around and said, look, it's a Bronco. And of course, it's not a Bronco, it's a Jeep Wrangler. Um, so maybe this is a copy of a Jeep Wrangler. Maybe there's just too much similarities. Maybe it's just this big tire that's attached to the back that made him confused, but it does look very Jeep Wrangler-esque. The one thing I have, uh, I do have in, uh, to complain about is the lack of what's going on here. I understand that there's a vacuum gas shock here, but I feel it just should be much easier to open or at least open all the way. If I try to push it, it just retracts back in general. Finally, it'll open all the way. So it's just quite inconvenient. And I don't know if that's a design flaw or maybe I'm just not using enough force, but it just, you know, there you go. Like it just seems generally useless the way it's opening. Once it does fully open, it is very practical. Um, you can flip this up and have access to the very ample rear storage room. And that's the one thing I really like about this is if I was keeping it, despite being a relatively compact or narrow SUV or truck, it does have the height. And there's a lot of space in there. There's, I don't know what you could fit in there, but certainly a family of three or four people could pack away a bunch of stuff some camping gear and that would be more than sufficient for them. So I give Ford uh, two thumbs up really on, on the functionality of the storage back here. Now I've mentioned this a couple of times already but this vehicle with the Sasquatch package I do really like the look of these wheels and tires. Um, they're ginormous. I know people have already put 37s on their Bronco and there's some dealers that are already doing it from the factory for their customers, but these are certainly plenty sufficient and they don't seem to give up a lot of road comfort. I mean, driving this thing around is not as comfortable and I will get into that later, um, but fairly comfortable um, just like, you know, my F-150 is, uh, even with these relatively big, heavy tires and wheels. However, there was one thing, this vehicle has less than 200 kilometers on it. Um, which means it's still basically brand new. I haven't driven a thousand or two thousand or five thousand miles like some of these YouTube reviewers have. Um, however, within the first 200 kilometers, I had such a squeal and a squeak coming from this wheel that I thought the vehicle was going to break. And what I think it was or is, is either something, the brake pad uh, rubbing against the rotor 
maybe it's loose or maybe it just wasn't set correctly from the factory or something to do with a rock jumping up in there um, and just you know getting lodged in there and rubbing against the rotor as I would go. I would only hear that loud squealing noise uh, between 10 and 40 kilometers an hour. It didn't really happen when it was going really slow and it certainly didn't happen or I didn't hear it when I was driving fast. I don't know if that's a one in a million thing and just my bad luck with this vehicle or it is maybe a design flaw that it's really easy to get stuff, uh, stuff jammed up in there and maybe that will be a future concern for Ford Bronco owners. I don't know, time will tell. Uh, if you have that problem, certainly post uh, below and let me know if you've experienced that as well. If you're familiar with the Bronco and you're watching this video, you probably also know that Ford experienced a notable problem with these hardtops from Wabasco, their hardtop supplier. Um, so much so that it was pretty much only these soft tops getting delivered as first. This is one of the very first hardtops to be delivered here in Ontario, Canada. And so far I've had no problems with it, but as I said, hasn't really been driven that much. But I will commend Ford on the general design of it. It does uh, provide ample amount of headroom, it doesn't get in the way. Uh, I know Ford added a sound deadening headliner option as a free option. Uh, I'm not sure why that was. Maybe it was a noise thing. Maybe it was a temperature thing. I'm not sure. But I went ahead and took the option. Uh, basically, it was originally a $500 option, but Ford added it in for free um, if you wanted it. So this does have the sound deadening headliner. And I will uh, as well commend Ford on just how easy it is to take the modular hardtop apart. In this case, I'm literally just going in here and folding a few easy to pull levers and boom it comes right off it's very very easy um i had an old jeep wrangler you know when i was young when i was in university i had i think it was a 1998 jeep wrangler and that thing had both a soft top and a hard top and it was a nightmare to get it on and off you basically had to have like some sort of a rig in your garage in order to safely take the top off. Whereas this modular design certainly makes things easier should you want to go from no top to topless. I'm not really going to complain about the interior. I believe it actually is a very cool utilitarian looking interior. I certainly wasn't expecting a Mercedes or a luxury car. Um, and this particular configuration is the marine grade vinyl. It, it, it's hard to show on the video, but it has such a strange feel to it. It doesn't feel like leather, leather. It doesn't feel like vinyl. It's a very, very, very smooth. And you can see it's basically reflective with the light. Um, I can imagine this is going to be super easy to clean should someone really take this thing off road and, uh, and want to get it super dirty on the inside. Now this has the, uh, this vehicle is equipped with the wash out rubber interior because it is the marine grade vinyl package. So there's no carpet anywhere. This is all rubber and you've got these super cool drain plugs in there. So again, I guess if you're doing the whole, you know, wading in three feet of water and you get a bunch of water or mud or whatever in here, you can quickly and easily uh, open it up to drain or if you're cleaning it, you can spray it out. However, let's be honest, it's a $75,000 truck. I'm not going to take a pressure washer to the interior. All right, we're inside the vehicle now and we're just going to give you a quick little tour. Got your engine start stop button where you'd expect it to be. Now let's start with the negatives. The negatives being, you know, again, I keep referencing the, the cost of the vehicle, um, but I would think that, you know, they could have done a full LED gauge cluster like modern Fords are, or like most modern Fords and Lincoln has. Both my F-150 and my Lincoln Navigator have full LED gauge clusters. This is sort of a, a half LED cluster then with the manual uh, speedometer there. Um, I'm not sure why they did that, if it was cost savings, but I feel like, again, for the price, uh, especially with the quote-unquote Lux package, um, they could have had a full LED speedometer and a full LED screen. Obviously, you've got the big, beautiful 12-inch screen here, which is part of Lux package, just like uh, my F-150 has, and I certainly wouldn't want to be without that. I just feel in this modern day and age where we're so reliant on tech and you know audio and navigation that having that big screen uh, just kind of steps up the interior a lot. Uh, I really like the contrasting stitching. You've got this kind of orange stitching, um, and orange accents around the vehicle, even on the, um, you know, the air registers and vents adjustment levers is uh, an orange thing. Um, going back, you've still got the uh, the seats with the orange piping in the back as well. So I definitely like that uh, 
that stitching, but unfortunately, you know, you can't customize the stitching. So if you get, I think it would look better if this was vehicle as the cyber orange on the outside with the orange accent that was look slick. But, you know, if it was a white exterior, or in my case, you know, the cactus gray, um, you know, orange doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. So I guess you just have to take what you get um, with this particular configuration. Obviously there's a general functionality in here. You've got uh, an ample sized uh, center console for storage which has a built-in uh, cigarette lighter charging port. Uh, this particular vehicle, again, has a Lux package, so you've got the wireless uh, QE, or um, the wireless QI charger um, here built into the vehicle, so you can just put your phone down there and without plugging in it, it will charge. You've got your uh, heated steering wheel button, uh, which by the way is nice that they added to the 2021 F-150s because in earlier F-150s, you had to go through the nav screen in order to turn the heat steering, steering wheel on, which was really annoying. You've got your heated seats and you've got your rear defrost, max defrost, and of course your standard for dual climate control. One of the quibbles that I have with this vehicle is the lack of window switches on the actual doors. I get that the doors come off, however, not having any switches here or here kind of make it a little bit odd to use. It's certainly a learning curve. There's no real reason they couldn't have done that. Maybe it's an homage to the original Bronco. I've certainly never driven an original Bronco, so I don't have one to compare. But there's enough electronics in this door because you've still got your locking mechanism and you've still got your window motors to control the power windows. So I don't see why they couldn't have just put these in a normal position. Uh, likewise, the left and right adjustment control for the power mirrors could have also gone on the doors just to make it a little bit more convenient. Now, I want to talk about the audio system. I'm kind of an audiophile. I like listening to my music loud. So some people have actually asked me about the quality of the audio system in this vehicle. Uh, most of the Fords and Lincolns I've bought recently, I always get the B&O, Bang & Olufsen audio system. However, I just want to be honest that just because it says B&O, I'm not exactly sure B&O is really a driving force behind these audio systems. To me, a Bang & Olufsen sound system is a fifty dollars to $100,000 BioLab set of reference speakers, not uh, a, a sound system found in a Ford vehicle. However, with that said, even with the upgraded sound system, you do lose a little bit of the vehicle sound dynamics because of the position of the speakers. Typically, you would have speakers here in the door or here in the lower uh, qu uh, quadrant of the door. But just because of the design and the fact that the doors come off, you've got speakers here, here, and here. It's just not an ideal place to have that audio bouncing off the relatively flat uh, front windshield to get a good dynamic sound. However, with that said, it is a sufficient sound system. I've listened to it a little bit but I do prefer the sound system, or at least the way it sounds in my F-150. All right, well, you're probably gonna wanna see this part of the video and you're probably gonna be asking, well, how does it drive? So, I don't have a lot to compare it to. Again, at, earlier in this video, I mentioned that I'm probably not the best person to be doing this review, simply because a lot of my experience with cars has been with, I mean, I've always had Ford trucks, SUVs, and things like that, but the majority of my vehicles have been uh, luxury cars and um, sports cars and exotic cars. So to drive this thing is a little bit um, unfair. To I've got the camera mounted on a regular tripod on the floor of the passenger side. I did that um, because when it shakes and when the vehicle drives you'll be able to see how, I don't want to say unrefined, but a little rough it is. And again, don't want to compare this to a luxury vehicle because it's not that. Um, but I'm having to talk a little bit louder because there is quite a bit of wind noise and just general exterior noise. I would imagine it's probably much worse in the soft top than it is the hard top. And maybe that's why Ford recommended the sound deadening headliner that I had installed at no charge because of, uh, oh, and, and it's shedding apparently. It looks like it's snowing in here. You might not see that on camera, but as I touch the headliner, it's... Uh, it's all snowing um, in here with a bunch of felt dust or something. Anyway, um, motor. Definitely sufficient. Uh, it'll get up and go, um, but I wouldn't be passing any Corvettes or Mustangs on the highway. But of course, this vehicle wasn't designed for that. It's designed to have low-end torque, to be off-roading and things like that. And again, that's probably why I keep coming back to the point that I'm not the ideal owner for this vehicle. Um, it, it is a little bit unrefined for my tastes. It's certainly okay to drive, but if I'm being honest, uh, it might be me getting 
uh, up to the near wise old age of 40, but I would most definitely prefer driving my F-150. I have an F-150 Lariat Sport and it is just much more comfortable, much easier, much more enjoyable to drive. This thing is a little bit clunky, definitely loud, um, doesn't have as much space as my F-150, um, and I mean that's what I can say about the ride. It's just not, you know, I would just rather drive my F-150. So if you're an F-150 driver looking to get a Bronco and comfort and convenience is kind of parallel or important to you, probably wouldn't be buying a Bronco. However, it is still a nice driving vehicle. What I've heard from people that have Jeep Wranglers or TJs or whatever you want to call them, uh, I don't know what the current model de designation is for the, the modern Jeeps, but they tend to be a vehicle that you really have to drive, as in control, to keep on the road and on the highway. However, this more or less drives like any other Ford SUV, which I think is a good thing, because if you're using it as a daily driver and just puttering around town or going to the mall or going to Starbucks or you know Trader Joe's or whatever you want to do, um, you want to have a vehicle that you don't really have to think really, really hard about driving. Uh, which is one complaint I've heard about the Jeep Wrangler. So, going around the corner here, camera going sideways, there's a little bit of body roll, um, but not an excessive amount for a vehicle of this height and stance. You can hear the motor, and you can see me pick up and go. It's not actually that bad. Uh, according to my highly calibrated butt accelerometer, it gets a 7 out of 10 on the acceleration scale for an SUV. It's certainly no Lamborghini Urus or Bentley Bentega, but it'll do. Now there is one thing that you might find amusing, but every time I get in this vehicle, and again it hasn't been a lot, but when I drive this vehicle for some reason I feel like I'm getting on top of the back of a warthog. And I'm not referring to any sort of special model designation for a future vehicle. I'm talking about these weird flared up things on the hood that have the, um, I guess, tie downs. They just remind me of the side bone structure of a warthog's uh, nose or tusk. And that's the very first thing I think of when I get in this vehicle is that I'm literally hopping on the back of a warthog. Now with all this said, you know, I've touched on the negatives of this vehicle um, and also some of the positives. But I want to reiterate that I think Ford has done an incredible job making this what the average Bronco buyer would expect. Um, if you're coming from a luxury SUV, a uh, Lincoln or a Land Rover or a Lexus, you're going to be a little bit taken back, maybe a little bit shocked. Uh, by how this thing performs and how loud it is from the wind noise um, and how kind of, you know, jittery it is from the, the Sasquatch package and the suspension, etc. However, if you're coming from a Jeep Wrangler or you're, you know, one of those overlander, off-road, hardcore types, that's not like me, um, then I think you'll be plenty happy and plenty surprised with how this vehicle is. I think my biggest reason for giving this vehicle, a vehicle back to the dealer, or rather selling this vehicle back to the dealer, really has to do with me personally as an auto buyer. I've had a lot of vehicles, um, this is my 50th vehicle in my short 40 years of life, but generally I am an impulse buyer and normally an impatient auto buyer. I might wake up one day, search through the auto trader, and find something I want, go there, make a deal, buy it, and take it home within a week. However, of all the 50 vehicles I've owned in my life as a driver, this has been the one I've waited the longest for, which is crazy. And I say that because what I think's happened is in the year since I put down my $100 deposit and made my reservation, things have changed. You know, I just... I, I realize that if I'm going to have a second or third vehicle, it doesn't need to be another SUV. Partly because I thought I was going to get this thing in the summer of this year, 2021. It's now October. I literally just got this thing last week. I was expecting it June, maybe July. So the prime time for Bronco season has basically ended, and I would just rather drive my truck in winter. So that's partly why I'm getting rid of it. I could definitely see myself driving 
uh, another, you know, high-end Mustang, like the Shelby Mustangs. I had a Shelby GT350 a few years back. Obviously, I've had McLarens, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, Lotuses, you know, a lot of high-end exotic and luxury cars. I feel that for my secondary car budget and utility, I shouldn't be fooling myself into thinking I'm going to drive basically a jacked up SUV instead of my wife's Lincoln Navigator or my Ford F-150. Well, that about sums up this review of my new 2021 Ford Bronco. This is a special vehicle um, because it's the vehicle I've owned the shortest. Typically I keep vehicles for six months, a year, maybe three years. Um, this vehicle I'm going to have for all of 10 days before it goes back to the dealer. But again, do not let that discourage you. It is an awesome looking vehicle. I mean, I, if, I, if I could just put it in my backyard on display and justify that, I would because I think it is so cool looking and that's basically why I bought it. But for my particular purposes, as a secondary or tertiary vehicle now being fall and winter, it really makes no sense for me to keep. I've got a nice F-150 that is fully loaded that I would rather drive. If I'm looking for a little bit of luxury, I can drive my Lincoln Navigator. And if I'm going to buy a vehicle that is going to be a secondary or a tertiary driver, I will probably wait till the spring. Hopefully COVID crazy insane resale prices come down by then and I'll probably buy a 911 or a uh, Bentley Continental GT or, or something like that. Something not quite as extreme as a McLaren or Ferrari or Lamborghini, but not so uh, rudimentary and rugged as this Bronco. Well, if you enjoyed this video, let me know how I did. I've been a car guy for a long time and this is my first attempt at an auto review and I did it because, well, I've got a brand new Bronco here, so I might as well do it if I'm gonna do one. And uh, if you are completely offended by what I said about the Bronco, I apologize. Don't let it discourage you. You should still be super excited about your Bronco because it is such a very, very cool vehicle. It's just not necessarily for me. But anyway, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you later.